Hello, this is Tony Rogers with the Products by Design podcast, where product development industry experts share their insight. It's six questions in nine minutes because product development experts are busy and want to get right to the point. So let's start. Welcome to the podcast. Uh, In a few sentences, please tell us who you are and what you do. Hey, uh, I'm Ben. I run a startup called Obvious. Um, We're a SaaS platform that helps get IoT companies from prototype to production lightning quick. Sounds sounds great. So, uh, Ben, what's the best thing about being in product development? I absolutely love being in product development because it's just this endless game of solving open-ended problems. It's um, because it, it's about it's about chasing the um, the solution to a problem, not necessarily just designing a product. Right when you're uh, when you're a um, uh, an engineer, or when you're a programmer, you have a product spec laid out for you, and you have to build something to that spec. Of course, you uh, use your professional judgment to uh, design it as best and as efficiently as you possibly can, but you're building to uh, to a product spec. Whereas when you're a product manager, when you're actually in that product development role, you're you're building something to a problem, which is, it's so much more open-ended, it's so much more blue sky thinking, um, and you can be really creative with it. I really like that. It's like a constant puzzle, right? When, once is. you finish solving one problem, you're just, you just move right on to the next. Yep. It has no borders. <laughs> so Ben, uh, I hear in the industry that companies are always looking to accelerate product development, increase innovation, and or improve the handoff from design to manufacturing. Tell me your thoughts. Um, the biggest thing I found is if you want to increase innovation, trust your people. Um, I think a mistake that a lot of companies make is that they keep innovation at the, at the highest levels. They keep it in uh, middle to upper management. And they, they think that because these are the people that are doing, uh, doing the product development and the road mapping and all of that stuff is that they have the, the longest line of sight that they can make the best decisions on how to innovate. But I would argue that it's the people that are building the product every single day that they have a list a mile long of, oh, well, instead of uh, building a product this way, if we could re-engineer it to, uh, to do it this other way, we'd uh, you know, have a, a 5x savings in manufacturing uh, time or, or something like that. It's, it's the, the doers that I think have the greatest insight into how to help your product evolve in the most efficient manner. I I agree, Ben. Everybody on the team should be responsible for bringing innovation to the table. Uh, I I agree 100%. It can't just be at the top, at the top levels. Every, everybody plays a part. Absolutely. And and having, having a team where everyone, uh, you know, is respected and listened to makes a huge difference to the end end result. Uh, and you also mentioned, uh, you know, how do you prove the improve the handoff from design to manufacturing? And of course, that's that's a huge <laughs> stumbling block for so many companies. I mean, that's that's it part is. of why um, obvious exists in a in a sense. But just a, as a general uh, tidbit of wisdom, the idea that it is a handoff is, I think, incorrect. Um, I think that the transition. Um, from uh, prototype to production, from design to manufacturing, needs to be viewed as circular because the product designers are designing a a product that fulfills its function as best as possible and they have some insight into manufacturability. But once you hand it off to manufacturing, um, it it shouldn't just be a, a handoff with instructions, it should be, all right, it's going to go into manufacturing and they're going to validate my product for manufacturability, uh, for, you know, uh, potential errors that come up, all sorts of different things. Manufacturing is, in my mind, I'm just another stage of the design engineering that from manufacturing, there has to be feedback to the product designers and that loop has to continue. If it's just a, if it's just a handoff, that is, you know, you're never going to find um, efficiencies and uh, potential savings and ways to improve the product that manufacturing finds all the time. 
Yeah, I agree. It, it is a blending of, of bringing the manufacturing uh, uh, phase into, into the development process. And uh, yeah, the, the, the more communication there is uh, between, the, between the different segments and departments, uh, marketing included, everything, uh, marketing, sales, product development, manufacturing, the, the, the more that that's blended, uh, you know, the, the, better, the better the communication is going to be. Uh, 100% agree with that. Absolutely. So uh, tell me, what other industry experts like yourself should be on the Products by Design podcast? Somebody that uh, I would tap on the shoulder uh, is an old university friend of mine. Uh, his name is Benny Jang, and uh, he has been a big part of the growth of CryptoKitties. Oh, wow. Yeah, so totally unrelated to yeah. uh, hardware devices, IoT, all of that stuff that I do, but I just, this is something that I watch from afar. Um, and he has been uh, a huge part of the integration into the industry, like helping pave the path for acceptance of the product, um, which I think is something that not many people think about when they think about uh, product design, product management, all of that kind of stuff. It's just, it was a very interesting role uh, to watch. And I think he could have some, uh, some neat insights there. Well, that would be great. I, I'd love to have him on. I mean, the, the different perspectives of the people that, uh, that come on this podcast is, is really the, the fun part of it. Uh, so yeah, that sounds, it sounds like a, a, di a different area, but related and, and would be very interesting to our viewers. Yeah. So so tell us the, uh, what insights would you like to share with the product development industry? So, uh, I mean, this is the, uh, the little blurb I sent to you. Um, in, in product design and in, in startups, in company design, um, one of the colloquialisms you hear all the time is do things that don't scale. You know, if you have to fly to your uh, to your first customer's office and do the integration yourself and do that because nothing is more valuable than your first customer. And um, if you have to uh, translate your user manuals by yourself because you can't afford to hire a translator to do that because it's worthwhile. All of that, um, you know, comes back to the, the adage, do things that don't scale. Um, there is one business segment where I would say be very cautious of doing that. Um, and that is in, you know, hardware design itself. Okay. Um, I guess this kind of gets into your last question. Um, uh, you, which is, you know, what's the craziest thing I've seen in product development? It, it ties back to, uh, ties back to this. Well, so don't, do what things, that is. Yes. <laughs> don't do things that don't scale in hardware design. Um, so, uh, in a, in a previous life, um, I was working in, in product development um, on a like at home, uh, medical device. And one of the product specs was that we had to have a, um, a tablet, uh, that had an LTE connection or you couldn't, uh, you couldn't rely on the customer accurately connecting it to their home Wi-Fi. So we had to have a windows, um, uh, windows tablet with an LTE connection and it had to be rugged. Wow. So, <laughs> um, only one of those existed um, and they, um, they had been end of life already. Okay. So as the product was uh, ramping up, I was buying every last stock unit I could find on Amazon, on eBay. Oh man. Whatever it was. I was basically clearing out the world of, of this last remaining tablet that fit that spec. And it just, that was one of those things, okay, of course that doesn't scale, um, but I guess the, the decision was, you know, we have to get these first units out so that we can get customers using it and we'll, we'll re-engineer the app to run on Android later or, you know, we'll hire a, a contract manufacturer to build us something to that spec. Awesome. But, uh, awesome, awesome. Hey, we're just about out of time. This is Tony Rogers with the Product by Design podcast where product development industry experts share their insight. It's six questions in nine minutes because product development experts are busy and want to get right to the point. So for more insights and ideas, go to creativemechanisms.com.